I wanted. I was thinking about the uh, communication uh, problem, uh, the so-called communicating with extraterrestrial intelligence, and I want to uh, understand if you have a perspective on this, because as you make the case so often, a lot of language is, as you're saying, is is not even the verbal or, or structural or even the, the linear processes by which language can be acquired um, by human beings. And, uh, and yet, if you imagine the problem of communicating with an extraterrestrial civilization using purely using a printer or using binary code or some such uh, form of flashing uh, lights converted into into uh, Morse code perhaps uh, is it uh, and assuming the intelligence could decipher such a thing first of all assuming they exist by the way do you believe that there are extraterrestrial civilizations I promise this won't be a long uh, what's that? Fermi paradox. Yes. Do you believe that they exist, or do you have a, a, a reason to suspect that they might not? Intelligent communicating technological intelligence. They may. They may be all up there. If they have any intelligence and they pay any attention to what's going on on Earth, they'll get far away. <laughs> I do with people with creatures like us. That's right. So I think that's probably the answer to the Fermi paradox as a joke. But... Uh, uh, there may be extraterrestrial mm-hmm. intelligence, maybe not. And but then assuming that... Notice intelligence is a very rare p- property. Uh, you may have seen Ernst Meyer's article on this responding to uh, Carl Sagan. You've seen that discussion, interesting discussion. So uh, Carl Sagan, from the point of view of an astrophysicist, is... It's got to be all these planets out there, very much like ours. So it's got to be like this. And Meyer, from the point of view of a biologist, he was a grand old man of American biology, he says, well, maybe. But he says, we have one case that we know about, Earth, where there have been about 50 billion species. Uh, some of them are biologic, biologically successful. That means they survive and proliferate. Now, some of them are not. The ones that survive and proliferate are the dumb ones. Things like bacteria mutate very quickly, no problems. Or say beetles. You remember old Ames famous comment that God must have loved beetles. He made so many of them, right? (laughs) They're fine. They find a niche, they just stick to it, and they get by. But as you go up the scale of what we call intelligence, Survival gets lower and lower. Uh, Large mammals, for example, are very rare. The only reason there's a lot of cows is because we domesticate them. But if you look at wild, in the wild, uh, say apes, very few, they don't survive very well. And uh, if you take humans, it's probably only the last couple hundred thousand years, which means that Several billion years of life went by, and there were no humans, nothing with what we call higher intelligence. That's right. So if you extrapolate and ask what might happen on other planets, the chances of developing higher intelligence might not be very high. Yeah. They just might not survive. And even if they're intelligent, it doesn't mean that they're technologically advanced, um, that they're able to interpret and build, build uh, devices. You know, I, I always say it takes, you can't build a solar panel. You know, solar panels weren't built using solar panels to provide power. Uh, in other words, there's a hierarchy of energy scales that were needed to construct something as sophisticated or not as a photovoltaic cell. Tiny percentage of human life. But let's suppose that, they, that there's something like you human intelligence there. Would there be ways to communicate? Well, I think the thing to do is not to look at the printer. You know, they could have used one. Just like humans, we can use one or another sensory motor system. We can use our hands. We can use touch. You can even learn language from touch. Yes. Uh, you can learn. Uh, we use sound because it's convenient. We use some other. So I don't, I don't really think that's the issue. The issue is the internal system. Mm. A system that constructs infinitely many thoughts, basically. And if you look at that, there's a pretty good reason to think that there might be a mode of interaction, namely arithmetic. Mm-hmm. If you take a look at the structure of language, it's 
the internal system. And I think there's pretty good evidence by now that it's based on the most elementary computational uh, device, namely binary set formation. And if you take a look at binary set, from that you can construct the infinitely many structures and so on. And if you take a look at that, you can, from binary set formation, with a lexicon of one element, you basically get the basis for arithmetic. Mm -hmm. yep. uh, there's a kind of another direction from which you could look at this. Uh, Marv Mensky, you know, guy I found yep. at AI, about uh, must have been 50 years, 60 years ago, uh, did some experiments in which he just took the simplest Turing machines, fewest states and, uh, and uh, symbols, and asked what happens if you just let them run wild. You know, turns out almost all of them crash. Yeah. Either they get into an infinite cycle or they, uh, or they terminate. Uh, but, but some survive, and it turned out they all had the successor function. So, and then he concludes, well, suppose evolution is getting to the point where it's developing systems that have some of the capacities of Turing machines. Well, it's going to hit on the simplest things. And the simplest things will give you something like the basis for arithmetic. And maybe they'll give you language. That's a point where there's possible convergence. Uh, it, 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 in order to pursue it, you have to show that, uh, so for example, this point I made about structure dependence, that actually follows directly from the fact that the basic computational system for language is binary set formation, because that does not yield linear order. So if that's the system that's in your child's brain, it's never going to use linear order. It'll use it for communication, but that's because of the sensory motor system. The sensory motor system requires linear order. We can't talk in structures, so you have to linearize the thing. But that's a property of the printer. It has basically nothing to do with language. The sensory motor system was in place hundreds of thousands, millions of years before language emerged, and it's basically nothing to do with it just as your printer has nothing to do with the program and the laptop. So in, in the absence of all systems, though, uh, <clears throat> so the absence of a neuro a me a mechanistic touch uh, sound uh, with these aliens, it, merely communicating only with arithmetic, um, you know, symbolic, symbolic logic, that would be sufficient... Uh -huh. Um, that's it. I assume that they have some mode of externalizing what's in their heads. Mm -hmm. now, if we can latch on to that mode mm -hmm. of communication, that printer that they're using, then we could go back to the internal system. It's a good reason to believe that they would have the successor function in addition. Mm -hmm. We have the successor function in addition. It's part of our language. So maybe that could be an entry point.